Ciao, io sono Mark. E John. The Dirty Honey, and you are watching Linear Rock. You are on Linear Rock. Yes. Ciao, it's Mark. And John. And you are on Linear Rock. Fuck! We didn't say Dirty Honey. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, that's no, okay. Ready? Ciao, it's Mark and John from Dirty Honey, and you are on Linea Rock. Boom. <laughs> okay. Mr. Mark Labelle and John Otto, welcome to Linear Rock. Grazie. And welcome to Italy, of course. Thank you. It's so great to have you back. So you're one of the hottest bands around, the living proof that there's still hope, you know, for rock and roll. And you've been non-stop touring pretty much since day one. That's true. Do you feel more lucky or tired about it? Uh, I'm both. <laughs> Not tired of it, but uh, I am tired. Okay. But but I feel lucky. Yeah. But is it still, you know, a wild dream coming true, or it's even tougher than you imagine it to be? Um, it's definitely still a dream coming true, and I think we both feel like there's a lot left to achieve. Um, but I think we're definitely surprised, maybe, by how much work it is. Yeah. And it's not, uh, it's not easy. Mm-hmm. Um, but we are here to seize the moment and, you know, make the best of the opportunity that we've been given. How, how do you keep your spirit high, especially, and, you know, and fresh on the road day by day? Uh, <laughs> Honestly, the show does it for me. Oh. I think the rest of the day is try to stay lay, lay low, do, you know, get some nice food and do whatever you gotta do, but the show, the show is the real lift to the next okay. thing, you know, because the rest of the days we have to travel, long bus rides, and um, although, you know, today I took a nice bike ride around the lot, and oh, yeah. that's, uh, that gives you a nice lift when the weather's nice. Yeah, it's a beautiful yeah. day. You get a so, little, get a little, because I'm pretty, I was pretty tired today, but that, that actually kind of rejuvenated me. So. Um, the feeling is that your bond as a band, um, kind of, you know, con consolidated uh, the old way. So playing, playing, and playing, maybe even before touring. Mm -hmm. um, was this the plan since day one? I mean, you just started playing and whatever happens, happens? Or the plan was, you know, to make this for a living as a job? That was the, uh, I mean, by playing a lot, it kind of, you, you would make money, of course, even in California, a little bit of money. We didn't uh, live very extravagantly. We live very small, and like, so long as you get a hundred dollars in free food and drinks at a club, like, that makes things a little easier um, as you're coming up. But the plan was to definitely like get on the road, tour, um, and obviously we've exceeded all of our hopes and dreams in that regard so far except for our own like, headlining tours being as big as we want them to be. Yeah. But there was definitely a moment in time where like, we loaded up the guns and had to take our shot at making this a real professional life. And fortunately, the risk paid off. But Corey quit the band, uh, uh, meanwhile. So what happened? I mean. Uh, why, why this choice? <laughs> uh, it, it's like, you know, the, the band is growing so fast, so you're having, you know, bigger and bigger success day by day, so yeah. was maybe his plan not to do it so high profile? <laughs> or uh, It might have been part of it for him, but I, I mean, I think the, sim the simplest, shortest answer was, I think we knew, and he knew from the beginning, that the touring life was going to be tough for him. Oh. So I think the years that he was in the group, he was sticking it out and doing as best that he could. And I think um, after the last, this last year, which was pretty busy, uh, he, I think he finally made the choice to, you know, not do it anymore. So, 
in that sense, it wasn't a surprise. Obviously, it was tough. But um, how did he, he approach the thing? I mean, did he tell you before, or it was like a, you know, day and night thing? You know, I, I'm quick. You know, I'm it's, leaving the band. You know, and how, how did you feel? Well, I mean, he, you know, he, yeah. did, he did it the proper way. Okay. Know, and, and, you know, he did what he had to do. Like, yeah, no he didn't way. leave us high and dry, and, and there's no. It's yeah. a very no bad blood. Yeah, there's, 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 no there's no band fight. There's no juicy <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah, there's no there's no crazy story. He's not bent on drugs. No one got into a fight or anything. Okay. Uh, there's no squabbles. So just you know. But no, we love Corey, and he's obviously a fantastic drummer. Yeah. But, um, you know, I think last summer too in Europe, touring through Europe was really, really, really hard and rigorous, and like we were everywhere. We were, in two, we were in two buses, both were like breaking <laughs> as, as they went for It was really tough. Literally. And, uh, <laughs> Did you, you feel know. like losing, you know, a friend? Uh, well, or it's like still a still new a year, friend, you know, yeah. a new chapter for the band. And, yeah. You know, let's go on. We knew okay. it was gonna... Coffee <laughs> time. <laughs> this interview is brought oh. to you by Hot Sauce. Hot Sauce. Yeah. It's about to get a lot more talking. <laughs> But, right. uh, yeah, it was tough. We, we thought it was going to be tough to transition, and, um, you know, Jaden's made it about as easy as possible. And, you know, How he, did you find him, I mean, Jaden? So I mean, with you're us. always uh, on the road. Jaden's so. been a good friend of, uh, especially, um, well, all of us, but uh, Justin and I have, uh, we actually lived with him for a while, and oh. we did various recording projects and, and played gigs and stuff. And then he actually kind of helped us out years ago in... Um, some videos that we put online. Oh. So there's kind of a little Easter egg there for fans. If you can find it, um, he, he's in a couple of videos. And yeah. They're still up, right? I think yeah. so. People have definitely found him. So, uh, so people you found the songs so, and then... Uh, and he's yeah. just a homie and he's a great drummer and, and um, it, it's really, a, it, he's, he's fit right in. So, you know, we haven't made a decision about any permanent member, but member. Okay, so he's, he's not the new, the definitive new drummer? Maybe we'll time will tell. You, you, know, you, okay, you don't know. Okay. Yeah, we like, we'll see. I feel like he's feel been doing. Like, um, he's been doing exceptionally well. <laughs> this feels like um, uh, casino. And he's like, so would you say in effect you are the boss? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. From day to day. <laughs> yeah. Mr. De Niro. <laughs> so you are the boss. Uh, well, <laughs> I am. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so in six years you've grown so much. You've grown it's a lot. It's been six years. Yeah, it's already six years since you started wow, the band. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I mean. I read. Yeah, I guess so. 2017. Yeah. 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 Crazy. Time flies. <laughs> yeah, but you recently released uh, 2.0, the new version of mm -hmm. Heartbreaker. Why this choice? You know, just taking your time while new inspiration comes. Is a, or you have like a sort of writer's block, you know, because oh, no. you're doing, you know, a, a lot of live shows. We're um, we are out of ideas. Writers? No. <laughs> no, maybe, no, okay, you're just searching, uh, you know, a new direction and you, you, you want in a sense of the day. Uh, sure. uh, some new stuff? Tonight. Is in the in the set list tonight? Yeah. yeah. Oh we'll wow. So yeah. so you're writing new stuff. We always are writing new stuff. It's just a matter of like not having any time to go like really do a proper. You record. can't if you're touring nonstop. It's really hard. Usually when you get off the road, you need at least a couple of weeks to feel like a normal human being again, and then to go into the studio, you need a couple weeks to get prepared and flush out ideas that mm. you've been working on before you even go in and try them in the studio. And then you need, like, ideally you'd have about a month in the studio to just use the studio as a songwriting space, a rehearsal yeah. space, a creative space, and an experimental, you know, outlet. Um, so really to find eight or nine weeks of like free time has been pretty tough to really go in and lay some stuff down. But uh, we have some time set aside after this tour to get that done. Yeah. But yeah. Well, heartbreaker. Yeah. Well, you felt we the need to update the it. Pandemic, <laughs> uh, because the pandemic, that actually wasn't my, uh, uh, I didn't start that, what do you call it, inertia? I don't mm -hmm. know where to be. 
Uh, but the, the pandemic cut that song off from being the next single. It was going to be the okay. next single back in 2020. Yeah. And so we still wanted to do it. We thought you know, it was a great opportunity to do that. And we just we just felt like getting creative and mixing it up a little bit and doing a second version of it. Um, made it a little bit more backbeat kind of. Okay. Yeah. So so is this the new direction? I mean, maybe. I mean, it doesn't sound that much different to me. Yeah, but the. the Maybe the, the first one is, is more raw, you know, more hot-blooded than the second one. So I was wondering, you know, if on the road maybe your sound uh, developed I mean, in yeah. a different way. That's funny because, I, I mean, in terms of the guitar, I play literally kind of what I've been playing. Okay. Right. Maybe it's like just the version, mix or yeah. the sound, okay. So... It, you, you you told me that you are writing new stuff. Do you have um, already plans on when the new album will be out? Um, we're hoping like summertime. Okay, so yeah, yeah. we're pretty much there. Well, well, it's still <laughs> February, but yeah. it feels like uh, June today outside. But yeah, we're hoping. She's like an investigator. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> She's excited. She's like, where were you? <laughs> The day Heartbreaker was hatched 2.0. Oh, you know, there are so high expectations on the new songs and new albums. So you are testing the new songs yes, on, yeah. uh, on the road. This is what we did with uh, LP as well. When we toured yeah. in 2020, we called it the Rolling Stones Tour. We played The Wire, Take My Hand, Tied Up, all the time, mixing up how to do them. And we would do the same with like when I'm gone and down the road yeah. um, in bars and clubs around LA. That's true. So like, do you feel any pressure at this point, or uh, is still you know natural for you? Only from you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, only. No, I, I think um, we're just excited about the material we're writing. So the pressure goes into the writing room, but it's not pressure. I mean, you can't. It's a blessing to do what we do, and you have to keep it fun, you know? So as soon as you start feeling pressure, then you start asking yourself crazy questions, like, what's, you know, what song's gonna be a number one? Or, you start asking yeah, a lot of questions. Yeah. You, can't, you can't feel pressure. It's gotta be, uh, you still love writing rock and roll, playing music, so. Are you two the main writers in the band, or you work as a band? Would you, in effect, say you are the boss? <laughs> Uh, I would say I've written a lot of the riffs, yeah. and he's written okay. a lot of the melodies. Okay. Uh, but Justin Partners in Crime. One, so. one of the new songs, Justin, um, he's wrote the riff it. for yeah. one of the other new songs. Justin kind of started the riff, and John morphed it into something. I would say mm -hmm. more Which us, the Dirty Mind riff. Yeah, it just yeah. started as that. I, yes, yeah, really. Yeah, I was trying to do it. Yeah. You know, in the chorus of that one, um, you know, if you're not familiar with it yet, obviously, but that one just came together really um, when we were in Cardiff, Wales, like two or three weeks ago. So um, and that just came together in soundcheck, and everybody seems to be loving it. But <coughs> um, it can happen any, anyway. It more often happens with, yes, a riff from me and vocals from him. But it always gets finished as a group. Okay. Yeah, but like, you know, he plays guitar, Justin plays guitar. So they uh, submit riffs to the group as well. Guitar ideas, I guess. Call it. What do you think does um, so much, you know, uh, willing to listen and also to make classic rock stuff in the last 10 years? You, you've been one of the bands, you know, to carry that flag up high, like the Rival Sons or, uh, uh, I don't know, Great Love of Fleet, of course, The Answer, or I'd say even, you know, Blackstone Cherry or Blackberry Smoke. And your name, you know, comes up, you know, Dirty Honey is one of the hottest bands in the old style around. So uh, It's so funny, like, because we had a sense. <laughs> we don't really think of it as like classic rock. We just think of it as rock and roll. Like, yeah. Okay. I don't think of you know Soundgarden and Pearl Jam or like Audio Slave as like classic rock bands. They, even though they have the same instrumentation lineup as 
Zeppelin or Aerosmith or ACDC, they're just all playing this sort of blues inspired, soulful, yeah. raw, high energy rock music. And I think, you know, just time makes it maybe classic, quote unquote, but it's really just rock and roll. It's a faster version of the blues and yeah, white people are doing it. You know? Yeah, yeah. But, uh, I interviewed Jared James Nichols last night. Oh, you uh, did? Is it? Yeah, he was in Milan. Yeah, he oh, played crazy. last night. And he came in our studios and he was telling us that right now in the States, the club scene is weird. That post COVID, not many people in some areas go to shows. Is this the same thing you are experiencing? There's a different kind of approach to the live music right now in the States? Or? I feel like we got lucky. <laughs> Yeah, we, we were kind of really fortunate to, when we came back, we were kind of one of the first touring acts around the States after COVID, and I think we we really were able to take advantage of a lot of excited people just to get out of the house, you know, and that was really great. And then we went on tour with the Black Crows, which was yeah. obviously great. Um, that was all amphitheaters, so I think people were willing to come out, because it was that open it was air, outside. Yeah. people thought it was safer. And then we did the Wolfgang tour, I think, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah. Which, which obviously went really well. So I don't think we've experienced the same maybe disinterest or something yeah. or weirdness that he might be talking yeah. about. But um, it was some, I, I think on the, I think on the Wolfgang tour, there was like, the, there was another sort of resurgence of COVID. And so there were some states we had to pay attention to which state we were in. Yeah, that's yeah. the same thing you told us. There was some like, yeah. oh, we're here now, it's wide open. And then the next few days was like, it's not open here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so now, so, now, it's, yeah, now it's, it's totally chill. You shared the stage with many bands, which is the best compliment that you got so far from, you know, your heroes, let's go. Because live, you have such an high energy, you know, that... <laughs> He wasn't there, but I think I he would agree. Uh, yeah, Slash just coming over and saying how much he liked what we were doing. And has wow. since been very vocal and complimentary about it. Um, yeah. He said our name is going to be really, really, really fun. Yeah, very humble. Yeah, it was like the first book I read when I moved to LA. <laughs> it was like Slash's book. You know? yeah. Cool. So. yeah. About Guns <laughs> and Roses. Um, you confessed that there were some of your main influences and inspirations. Mm -hmm. So how was sharing the stage with them? Did you actually meet the guys or it was a kind of... Uh, closed. Uh, yeah, yeah closed, you know, the, it's yeah. It's a lot of different dimension. Like you were there, but you didn't see the guys. And, uh, I mean, so they, you met Slash, yeah. but... <laughs> well, we met him on tour with his band. Okay. So He's not shy about if he's around though and can hear us playing he'll text one of us and say something nice if he enjoys it you know maybe he doesn't text when he doesn't like it but we've all met the guys like at some point or another um the guns and roses operations is so huge yeah it's it such is. a big tightly run ship at this yeah. point which is you know from what so i've read a, a, a welcome to change from the from the legendary days but uh yeah. Yeah, it's a very tightly run ship, so... So the atmosphere on that stage and backstage is, like, very tight? Or yeah, it's just a lot of security. And they're not even going to be at the gig. Like, yeah, they're not even play. at the gig. Like, <laughs> yeah, they roll up in separate vans. All right. Yeah, yeah. So like, was nice ones. Or Axel, I, I would probably do the same thing. Yeah, they're, all, they're at the Ritz or wherever they are, you know. Do you see yourself in that dimension? Maybe in 15 I, years, will you act yeah. the same way or uh, will oh, you be different? No, 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 no. <laughs> Hopefully not. Yeah. I think, honestly, at, at that level of fame, it's more a security precaution than anything. Uh, yeah, of course. Um, especially with them, the fans are so passionate. Like, who knows what would happen if they were like in the public sphere. It might get a little crazy, but... Uh, well, you know, our, our own warm-up rooms before the show, that would be a good level to get at. Mm. 
I was sitting in the room, I was sitting in the room the other night, I looked at Jaden, and I was like, yeah, it'd be nice. And he's over there going, and he's going, and yeah. I was like, yeah, it'd be cool to like have your own space the last 20 minutes before the show. I see. <laughs> okay. You got three, and then Justin's over there, slappity, slappity. Yeah. <laughs> it's not anything anybody wants to hear. At the same time. Okay, so you like so much to play cover songs uh, here and there, live, you recorded even some. Uh, which is your favorite one, the one that, you know, you feel you did the best? And did you ever think, you know, of putting out maybe a, a cover song, ZP, or no. album? Definitely not. And maybe it could, you know, reach a wider audience. No. <laughs> okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> no to that last one. I mean, that's me. I don't know. I don't need to put it. Yeah. I mean, maybe one day. I, I guess it's cool when bands did it later after they're really famous. Yeah, yeah. I'll do a standard record. Yeah, yeah, in that ring. If we really made it. But I wouldn't want to do it to try to gain an audience. Okay. You know what I mean? And I don't think that's the right way to gain an audience. I think Start spreading the news. Yeah. <laughs> we do that one day, yeah. Yeah. Like when, when, you know, like Guns at the Spaghetti Incident or, yes. you know, that, 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 but they were like well famous and I think that's kind of a cool nod. And they only did covers that meant something to them. Yeah. They didn't choose songs that they thought were going to get the traction. They were, you know, right. They did all these like punk songs that half of us had never even heard. Yeah. You know, they loved them. That's cool. I think that's, but again, that's another extension of showing, of letting the public know who you are as a yeah. person. I think the one I'm most proud of is the Prince cover, just because like we yeah. kind of were able Let's to make it crazy. our own yeah. a little bit. Um, even though I really liked doing Last Child, and we've done some ACDC yeah. and some Beatles stuff, but um, yeah. that one for me just has its own little Dirty Honey stamp on yes. it that makes it cool. I agree. Um, which is the very moment you told yourself, yes, we finally made it. Probably playing the forum for that? me. <laughs> so far. You know? mm -hmm. You're going to Jeeps? Yeah, I haven't made it yet. I haven't, I'm not where I want to be yet, yeah. but I think the one point of validation so far was we said we used to play a place in LA called The Basement. Mm -hmm. and it was literally in a basement. Like this. <laughs> and to go from The Basement to the Los Angeles Forum was really special for all of us. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, to have the support of our local radio station that we all like couldn't have ever dreams to have been on. Um, it was really, that was really special. And uh, for me too, like playing in my hometown on that same tour with the Black Crows, I played yeah. in Albany with um, the Saratoga Springs. Saratoga. Yeah. Um, it's the, the place I saw my first ever concert at. I saw Aerosmith there. And to be on the same stage as the first big show I really ever saw was pretty cool. And, Honestly, tonight will be really special in Milan. This is like a second home for me as well. Like here in Italy, I love this place, and I'm really hoping that the crowd um, <laughs> is uh, a little more vibrant and excited than the crowds I used to play at in Florence at the bar. Oh yeah, you know, to no one. Uh, I know you, Mark. You speak Italian. Johnny is Italian and doesn't speak a word, right? <laughs> so <Bon ciao. laughs> that's the only one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, come stai. Okay. Come so you're gonna speak you in Italian tonight, okay? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I will play the I'll play the songs in Italian. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, did you have the time to stop a while and realize what's happening to you guys, or actually you don't care and you just live it day by day? I think there's been moments of that. Like, where you just go, wow, this is happening. For me, like, the first one was the first the first gig our manager got us when he was, like, showing us he was serious. He got us opening slots with Slash. Yeah. And um, there was, like, a couple moments, like, because it was a sold-out house. Not that big. Maybe, like, 1,200 mm -hmm. people. But I guess kind of the size. And there was a moment before during the set, you swung your mic out, and everyone screamed to be in it, you know? And really, all we had done up to that point was play in this basement tap, and I kind of like almost, I sort of got teary-eyed out, because I, I knew at that moment, I was like, oh, we can do this, yeah. you know? Like, they're reacting, 
and, and it turned out we sold a lot of merch, which everyone was trying to manage our expectations and tell us that we weren't going to sell merch, which all signs pointed to the fact that we wouldn't. I mean, we had no music out. We'd never been anywhere. But people really responded. So that was like a, that was sort of a pinch me moment. It felt like we're doing the right thing. I think another one was the KOS on the highway. That mm -hmm. felt like a, that felt like a real gratitude moment. And you know, just, I don't know. And now, now, even today, I was riding around on the bike. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's a great day. The weather's amazing. We're, we're playing an almost sold out show. Sold out. <laughs> you gotta know I gotta get in. And that was the experience with the Black Crows. How was it? Yeah. It was amazing. Those guys were super nice to us and, like, obviously, um, wouldn't have had us on uh, if they didn't. Uh, at least like what we were doing a little bit, which was really cool, but yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, we will, I don't know if you've talked to them since on the phone or whatever, we've talked to Richard. Just, yeah, last time I talked to Richard, he was trying to send me a guitar I can't afford. <laughs> <laughs> but they, uh, you know, like, they keep in touch, and they're, um, they're doing great things too. I'm super happy that they're back, you know, yeah. it was nice to be in their world um, yeah. when they're... Yeah, I guess that was a, it felt special to be part of the return. Yeah, and like, hopefully, like, help keep it, not do anything wrong to, like, have it implode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did they you, were really, did you people were like, always asking us that. <laughs> you're like, are, but, are, are they getting along? What's no, going on? Yeah, but, no, I, I'm not asking that. I was going to say, people like you. No, <laughs> <laughs> but, but was that more a family kind of feeling for you since you shared the same manager and yeah, they're was, one of the and bands? We're also meeting them too. So. Oh, okay. It felt yeah. like we were. They were nice. in a, It felt like they were somewhat in a. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? I know what you mean. They, they were like they were like my they were like mentors. Yeah, it was a yeah. little bit of a mentorship. Yeah. You know, Chris yeah. had no problem pulling me aside and be like. This is what you need to do, like you can oh. do this better, you can fucking like you should really be like emoting and like stop with all the vocal acrobatics, like do it, but like give them a piece of your soul when you're doing it. Um, so, yeah, I should probably listen to you, you know? Yeah. And he learned a lot about like tone from Rich, I think, and just I yeah. took a lot of notes from the guitar. I bought an amp after I saw it. It's like I bought one of his amps, not his, but you know, oh. they're they're fucking awesome. Like they're real rock stars, like yeah, like to their core. He's like Chris, they're not faking it. No, and Chris would like help, but then at the same time he'd do a good, good job of reminding us who he is. Like remember we were at Red Rocks, and we were like he's about to go on stage, and he he comes through, and we say hi to him, and then he just kind of looks at us and he goes, he goes, you kids keep doing the right stuff, maybe you can afford the cool pants. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one day, and he did have bomb jeans on. Like, it was like, it's just funny. Like, he's got that swagger. He has it all the time, so it's cool. Um, about your guitars, John. So yeah. you're bringing to on the road. Mm -hmm. um, what's the story of the '58 one? The Peter Green involved, or it's not correct? Is oh, oh, the the '59. Yeah, the '59. Is, is, okay. Um, I believe it's supposed to be copied after the one I play, right? Isn't it after, it's after, I don't actually know. <laughs> <laughs> so the one I have is just a 2022 Lemon Drop Heavy Aged 59. Okay. Um, so it's a beautiful guitar, it's, it plays great, sounds great. It was a gift from Cesar. Um, who's been a great supporter of the band since about 2019, mm -hmm. I think. And then, um, I Cesar believe... Cesar works it. He's, Cesar, he Cesar sorry, he's the head of Gibson. Cesar! Uh, and he, um, he owns the, the Les Paul, the 59 Les Paul, that's like three serial numbers away from Peter Green's. Okay. Which Kurt Hammond owns now. Yeah. So they believe that they're carved out of the same piece All of wood. Right. Because the three, wow. the three serial numbers in between are like a lap steel and like some 
something else. So it's like the only two Les Pauls near each other are these two. And I believe mine is modeled after um, Cesar's. Cesar's is called Gemini, and Peter's is Queenie. Okay. So that's the story behind that. I don't, know if, I don't really know if mine's modeled after Cesar's or not. They are doing a greenie now. Oh. Like a custom shop. Yeah. Know, I think, um, dude from Slash's band just posted it. Um, Frank. Frank just got to play the f kind of first run of they're doing the greenie. Yeah. You know. Would you like to have your signature model? Or? Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what I'd do. Really. I mean, I have a couple things I would do, actually. Some little, some little <laughs> tricks that I mm. haven't advertised. I'm already doing to my guitar, <laughs> but... Um, Oh yeah, that's what I say. I don't know what I would do. Okay, so what's immediately next for you guys? More shows and uh, uh, sound check. Okay, <laughs> of course. Now yes, but <laughs> in the next few weeks, I mean, are you planning already when you will record actually the, the We're music, planning that the new songs? In the next mm. ten days. Yeah, it's gonna get done before the summer tour. Will you record back at home or? Uh, or I on the road. We won't somewhere. record on the road. Oh, okay. Somewhere in America or somewhere in Australia. Yeah. Okay. Not so. in LA. Yeah, we won't do it in LA again. Same. Okay, I can't wait to see it. No, to to, to listen to the new songs. I really can't wait. I'm very, I'm very curious. How many tonight in the set? Two. Oh, okay. So yeah, we'll get a little extra time. Definitely, We're gonna definitely be excited. one. But it just depends on the Milanese uh, crowd. <laughs> we could they... do three. Okay. Well, we, we haven't done three yet. Mm. It's up to you. <laughs> we only did this one other song in one other place, and we did it spontaneously because the audience was so great in Madrid, and we felt that they deserved something special. And I'm hoping that uh, I've been telling everybody the Italian audience is going to be insane because they were so crazy at San Siro. So, uh,. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. We'll see if they bring it. Good. If they bring it, we'll give it right back. They surely <laughs> brought it to San Siro. Yeah, we'll see. Okay, so no title yet for the new album? Nothing, no, no, nothing no. That's yet. That's all you get. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Fabian, all right. So it's going to be Rome to, tomorrow, so enjoy Italy. Thanks for being back. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much for having yeah. us. It's been, it's been great. Grazie, Dirty Honey. Grazie, Grazie. Grazie a voi.